So, Sunil, how and when exactly did you first really discover the power of meetup and webinar marketing, which is really needed today, I think more than ever, to make our human-to-human -human connections in business today? Well, I started a meetup. Uh, I started a meetup group in 2008. I actually took it over from somebody. Uh, I don't remember who it was, but uh, when we first started, when we first took it over, it had about maybe 50 people or so. And today it has over 4,000 members. Uh, and uh, I mean, overall, we've got 70,000 members. But uh, this is uh, that one group just has 4,000 members, and it. Uh, you know, it really began, it really opened up my eyes because I saw two things. One is, uh, you know, obviously it's a great opportunity to build an audience. Uh, but the second thing I saw was that a lot of people weren't doing meetup right. And I figured out, and a few other people in the area of meetups who were more in the know also figured this out, that if you just stayed consistent with meetup and did a few things, that Meetup will not only continue to grow for you, but it would also convert into business over time. And we did uh, you know, a couple of six-figure launches using Meetup with no paid advertising, no joint ventures or anything else, just pure Meetup. And that further convinced us that uh, you know, we could do this. Um, and that, uh, I mean, to be honest with you, initially, I didn't want it. <laughs> I didn't want to share it with other people <laughs> because I thought, well, heck, you know, we got a great formula here. Why spoil the barrel by teaching other people to do it? Um, and so I didn't think about it. You know, and I did other forms of business generation too. Uh, and then it occurred to me one day that my vision is, you know, to have a hundred million joyful and successful entrepreneurs. And Meetup was growing at a pretty much faster rate by that point. I mean, currently it has 32 million members around around the world, and about it's in 184 countries out of 190 countries. Uh, but when I saw that, I saw my vision statement. I saw, wow, you know, Meetup could be a a great platform to make this vision statement real. <laughs> you know, because I was looking at my vision statement. Yeah, I'm excited about my vision. I wanted to see it happen. I'd seen a lot of entrepreneurs around the world, and even in this country of ours, suffer and struggle. And just how to create an audience just i mean even getting like 10 20 people to sign up on their email list would be a fantastic achievement and i looked at all of that and i said no this should be a lot more easy it should be democratized people should have access to it uh eventually it should be de demonetized i think it'll head in that direction where it'll all be free i'd like to see that happen um and um when i looked at all of that i said wow this is going to be huge if i taught people how to use Meetup and grow their own audiences, it's not going to be to my loss. It's actually going to be to my combined gain for my community and all the people I love around the world to enjoy and build their own audience. And when I looked at that, I just said, well, I mean, I, I, I think I couldn't sleep for like weeks. I mean, literally, because the excitement of it was palpable for me, you know, and I said, yeah, like, we, we got to do this. We got to start teaching people how to use this platform right how to stay within meetup policies and and build an audience. Well, you, you know what I'm hearing from you and your answer that, that is really striking me is the yeah. difference in visions that people have. For example, um, the, the person you took it over from, maybe their vision was 50 people and you took it over and you brought in a whole new vision to it. You saw it in a whole new way. and then you, you have this vision that is pretty astounding. It's pretty amazing. And it's very not only empowering to other people, but it's also empowering to you to have that potential. Now, tell me a little bit. I want to learn a little bit more about your childhood because this is a kind of really, <laughs> you know, innocent childlike yeah. vision that we sure. have when we're kids sometimes. Is, is there anything in your childhood that's connected to, you know, what you really want to do even in business today? Oh, absolutely. And I, I think my mother would shudder when she hears this <laughs> because, you know, when I grew up, uh, I was a daydreamer. 
And I, uh, you know, when you looked at my report cards, when they came back, I'd always be embarrassed handing my report card to my mom, you know. And she'd look at him, look at me, and go look back at the card, you know, and it would say daydreaming all the time, you know. Um, but I look back on that, you know, the capacity to daydream is one of the best skills to develop. Now, I'm not advocating people, you know, daydreaming to the point where they're distracted to an unhealthy level. But daydreaming gives one the opportunity to come up and be resourceful in ideas and imagining things that most people would not dare to imagine. It gives your mind the free reign to go out beyond what you think is possible and to start stretching the imagination. But I took it a, a, a step further, and this is why I'm chuckling a little bit here, because my father, my late father, great father, he used to come back from work and he would chuckle because he would look at the garden and he would see my latest project. So I had everything that I used to dream up when I was at school. I couldn't wait to get home um, because I would get to play in my garden. And, you know, uh, so I constructed like I had a pet tortoise and I had like a very beautiful enclosure for him. Uh, you know, he, he, he I call him a chillist because he liked to escape a lot. He had a fast foot, man. He was a fast <laughs> God at tortoise. Uh, and so, you know, I devised all these ways to not only prevent him from escaping, but also to incentivize him to stay. Okay. <laughs> so I created a solar operated um, filtration system to keep his water clean, automatically feed him. You know, I thought all these great, stupid ideas. <laughs> some of it worked, some of it didn't. Didn't work to keep him in the cage. He eventually escaped and never saw him again. <laughs> but, um, you know, I had all these projects that I would do. Then that really taught me a very valuable lesson about being able to create something and then bring it to reality. And, you know, I bumped up against all kinds of challenges. I remember going to the library, trying to figure out how to do solar panels. And then I figured out, oh, you know what? <laughs> we got a long way to go before I could get the kind of current and power I needed to run the things I wanted to run, you know? And, but, you know, but it, it opened, it awoken in me this idea of, being able to be not just creative, but actually make things happen in physical reality, right? So, um, you know, um, that was one skill <laughs> that my mother would strongly disagree about. Uh, the other thing I think that affected or influenced me was this whole idea of, of, uh, of generosity, but generosity within a social context. I think from an early age, I realized, and I didn't quite put this together when I was young, but I realized that as human beings, we are primarily social. And our social aspect is that we like to contribute to each other. And there are exceptions to this, obviously. But for the most part, most human beings like to give and like to be contributed to. And um, at the back of my house, there was this, um, I live in Singapore. And in Singapore, in the tropics, we have this lovely red fruit. It's called the rambutan. <clears throat> the rambutan <laughs> sounds so majestic, you know, it's this. Is rambutan. Rambutan literally translates into hairy fruit. And it, it, this fruit is hairy. And I tell you, every June or whatever it is, when, when it fruits, the whole tree turns red, turns bright red. Okay. Now, everyone in my family loved the fruit, except for me. I hated this damn fruit. But I loved picking it. And I love picking it. I love picking it. I pick the whole tree, bring it, and you know whatever new fruits came up, I would pick it every day and put it really nicely and arrange it nicely on my family dining table. And my mother came to me one day and she said, aren't you a strange little one? You know, and she was just chiding me, of course, you know, in a fun way. But, um, and I thought, wow, yeah, I wonder if she thinks I'm really strange. And then I thought about that, you know, for a long time. And I finally realized that the thing that was just driving me was really just, I loved people, just loved giving to people. And I noticed that in my dad, I noticed that in other people as well, you know, like when you, give, you actually feel really great about yourself. Uh, and it doesn't mean that you have to keep giving until you're, you know, you're bankrupt. But um, giving as a partnership is something more interesting. So in later years, I discovered uh, through my other mentors that I had you know, as I grew up, uh, the art and science of creating partnerships and collaborations. And so, you know, this creativity that I had, this daydreaming that I had and my background as uh, as a, a professional fruit picker <laughs> for my family uh, combined, you know, to create this whole idea of creating creative collaborations and partnerships. And, you know, that's partly why 
I'm here today talking to you. <laughs> well, you know, I, in listening to your story, I'm kind of hearing two things. Uh, the story about the turtle uh, tells me that you were and are a problem solver at heart. And as both a kid and certainly now with systemization of Mita. And yeah. secondly, your love of people. The way I expressed my love of people was in a pretty unique way. Talk about being a precocious kid. I loved to interview people, even when I was a kid, because I really literally <laughs> looked at people like books. I it. They were like yeah. books to me. Right. Fascinating. <laughs> I wanted to know everything about them. And I, so, oh God. Yeah, yeah, so I was always asking people <laughs> questions. I wanted to, I was just fascinated. Maybe it was my way of entertaining myself by finding out oh, what man. their story was. But I always love to find out what's the story behind why what you do today that you do. So I, I got some of it, but go on with that a little bit. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that. I mean, I can totally, by the way, I can totally get that about you. You know, you, you really do love interviewing and getting a story clear for people. And it's just fascinating watching you work uh, and work me in this interview as well. It's really great. It's really great. Um, the... You know, like you too, I think I like to also, I mean, the two other things about me, I mean, I eventually became a system designer, uh, sorry, system engineer and a designer as well. Uh, and um, I was one of the engineers who worked on uh, what's called the air show. The air show is the, what you see on flights these days where they show the map and the plane and where the, the plane's at and, you know, where it's going to fly to another information, you know, the passenger might want to know about. Um, and, you know, I, I just love the creative aspects of that, but I also love the systematization of it, right? You systemize something in technology or, or, or combine it with a, with a human experience and you get something very special. Um, and so bringing that together, you know, that, that whole engineering, system engineering experience with uh, creating something that's worthwhile for people, plus... Um, um, uh, God, I, I thought of it and it just escaped my mind, but I'm sure it was brilliant. <laughs> That's why it's probably <laughs> no doubt, mind. no doubt. It'll come probably back a to sense you. of humor <laughs> helps as well. Oh, oh yeah, yeah I, I, know, I, I just remember. Yeah, I just remember. No, it's, it's what you do. You know, it's it's trying to find out what stories people have. Yeah, and then helping them expand that story so that not only it becomes real for them, but it becomes real and a legacy for other people to enjoy as well. So the thing I love about doing meetups is a lot of people come, like today I just had two, well, I actually had a whole bunch of conversations with people. I um, had like five conversations today with people. All of these are people are visionaries who want to make something happen. There's one guy, Fred, in my town, who loves to get adult people to play with certain toys and certain adult I shouldn't say adult toys because it gets a bad connotation, but you know, adult like non sexual toys, okay, there we go, uh, to increase their ability to play and be creative at their work. And he wants to take this around the world. He wants to expand it. He wants to show people how to do it. He has a story that he wants to get out there and he doesn't know how to do it. And it's complicated and it's messy, right? Most human stories are messy. They don't know quite how to make this thing work and sell it and make it economical for them. And I, like you, like to listen to people's stories and figure out how to take that story, put it on Meetup or put it on some platform and get it out in there in the world so people can enjoy their legacy, you know? Um, and that gives me no end of pleasure. Well, I think, um, you know, human interest stories are messy, uh, kind of the messier, the more interesting. You know, all we have to do is look at everything on the media today, what's going on to see. Sometimes right. messy Absolutely right. is the most entertaining thing that you could possibly have and should actually want. Uh, but what, what I actually love is the transformation stories that, that take us from one place to another. So let's go back in time a little bit uh, to the beginning of when you first were started in Meetup, where you were then, and how this whole process of Meetup and storytelling and helping people tell their story and build authority has really transformed you from one place to another, where you are today, but also how you help other people transform themselves and that helps you to realize your vision. Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, it's uncanny because I don't think anybody's really asked me that. It's pretty insightful of you. Um, you know, for me, I was struggling a couple of years ago. I mean, I was, I was, you know, a business coach and mentor and executive coach. And don't get me wrong, I loved what I did. 
but I've been doing it for so long, you know, that I wouldn't say it was boring, but it was almost like I was going through the routine because I knew exactly what to do in almost every situation most people threw at me as a business coach or as an executive coach and as a trainer. And I, I was discovering that, you know, it'd be pretty hard given my years, you know, decades of experience doing what I did to find anything really new. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I think the cutting edge brain science could be something new, but there wasn't really much new going on from the human point of view of doing coaching. So I started looking and I got, frankly, a little depressed because I wouldn't say depressed, but saddened uh, or uh, disappointed or maybe let down a little bit. You know, I thought, maybe, oh, it's maybe even a, a little yeah. uh, coping burnout. Uh, you know, sometimes coping burnout. Yeah, you're coping, but yeah. you're not really solving the problem, and and things start. You start to cope instead of no. solve, yeah. and then the the beauty of coping Correct. burnout is you just knock down those doors, and then you see you have a world of options available. So maybe that's something a part of what you might have been going through. Oh uh, no, no, you you hit it under red on, on the head. Absolutely, it's a coping kind of burnout. I got to remember that. That's a great distinction because. Um, you know, it's right. You know, when you're disenchanted, you tend to go either to ignoring it or putting up with it or trying to really change it somehow, right? And al almost all the time, when you, the more you try and change it, the worse it gets, <laughs> you know? So you start thinking of oversimplified reactions to it, like, oh, maybe I should just quit coaching altogether and go do real estate investing, right? Or something like that. And uh, then you go, ah, but I don't really enjoy it. So you're stuck in almost the same kind of thinking. And then... Um, you know, one day, uh, it must have been a couple of times I, I coached somebody in, in terms of creating a bigger vision for themselves. And suddenly I realized, duh, I should be doing the same silly thing myself, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> telling other people to do it. So I looked at that and I went, well, you know, there's this thing about, you know, doing something globally, right? Um, and people, my clients have been, they do great work. You know, I got great clients who are up to making a big difference in the world of climate change the world of hunger and poverty, in the world of tourist development for developing countries. I mean, the list can go on and on. And I said, okay, you know, it's got to be something global because I don't want to reinvent myself again. I've got to play something so big <laughs> that, you know, I, I don't have to reinvent myself. I probably will need to again. But, you know, so I started looking globally and I said to myself, you know, I've got to rein I got to bring back that goal I had when I traveled the world and I saw how entrepreneurs were struggling. And I always said to myself, I gotta, I got, we gotta do something about this. There are a lot of smart, intelligent people who are entrepreneurs who just don't have the training it takes to get their ideas out. They're resourceful, they're smart. They can really make things happen. They're energized enough, but they just don't have the structure it takes to create an audience. So what if I took on really, not just bringing them an audience, but really having them become joyful and successful? And then my, a part of my brain went, ah, that sounds so namby-pamby. But wait a minute. It's actually kind of exciting. Let's put some meat and concrete to it. What, what would joyful and successful look like? So as I looked at it, I said, well, for most people, joyful would look like having more free time. And uh, successful would look like having extra savings left over after their expenditures. And enough to feed their family and enough to send their kids to college, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, and I, as I investigated it further and I did some studies, I read some studies from the UN and the World Bank, it started making more and more sense. You know, there were 400 million, uh, 400 million entrepreneurs in the world, according to one study. And when I looked at the figures for the World Bank in terms of poverty and, and the figures from the UN, in terms of hunger and poverty and how much stress people were, et cetera, and I looked at all those numbers, I saw that, you know, it's, uh, it's maybe at best, and I, I keep changing these numbers, but... Maybe at best, maybe there's like 10, 15 million, maybe 20 million joyful and successful entrepreneurs. The rest of them are pretty, uh, uh, not making enough money or they're just overworked or both. So I said, well, okay, there's some meat to this. There's something here we can work with. And that got me excited. You know, the number was large enough. The challenge was there, but it wasn't overwhelming. It wasn't a, a namby-pamby goal anymore. This is something we can really work with. And Meetup could be a platform because it's everywhere. And as I ex explored it further, you can find Meetups in Lagos. You can find them in Indonesia. You can find them in rural areas of the world. 
why not use Meetup as a platform, teach people how to use Meetup, build it out, get them successful in their own area, then teach them how to collaborate with other Meetup organizers around the world so they don't have to rely on their own local economy to keep them going. You know, if somewhere in their economy uh, collapses, you know, they can still export their clothing or whatever they manufacture to other people in different countries and really keep it going, you know. Um, so that got me excited and uh, uh, here we are talking about it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's just something that lit me up and got me out of my funk. And, um, you know, it doesn't mean that you're just going to be happy all the time, you know, but it doesn't turn into a Disneyland movie, but it comes pretty close to it. But, but it's not, you know, what, what, you, what, what I've learned about having a big vision is you start contextualizing your challenges. You know, you need to have, most people <clears throat> need to have bigger challenges in their life, you know, because they're too caught up in their current challenges. Well, l l can I, yeah. let me comment on that. Uh, one, sure, of um, Meetup is a form of communication. To me, we've had so many big shifts and with a yeah. background of 30 years in media, I'm yeah. able to see media from a different perspective. And so to me, mm -hmm. me uh, Meetup has become a new form of media. That's one thing. Two, yeah. is that mm -hmm. uh, most people, anybody may be listening, so many people don't realize they might have a great idea like you did. You may have a world-changing idea up in your mind, but our mind it is in our brain and our brain has seven centimeters of skull around it and people don't right. know it unless you share it. Like you said, and here we are talking about the idea, we're digitizing it, we're getting it up, that's one thing. <laughs> the second right. thing, is I, I've been working with thousands of entrepreneurs for over 30 years. You said something very, very important. That when you take the thing that you love doing and you can turn that into a mission, that is, mm -hmm. I believe, the key to kind of, I won't say an unbreakable joy, but pretty darn close to it. So then when yeah. you have setbacks, it's not about you. It's it's not pushing you back. It's about your mission. So it's bigger than you, and, and that kind of helps. Uh, I think it's one of the things that keep us all going, the ideas and, and the distribution of big new ideas. And I think maybe that's a little bit about what led you to teach Meetup and marketing and not only using Meetup, but making them super successful and even global. So tell me a little bit about why you went into teaching about Meetup. Well, you know, I think partly it's because my, my mother was a teacher, too. Um, and, you know, I saw, I mean, I had <clears throat> great, great teachers in when I grew up. Uh, and they certainly left an indelible mark on my life in a good way. Uh, and, you know, so I think for me, I love the notion of teaching someone who's so hungry. You know, uh, when I get a hungry student, uh, I mean, there are two kinds of students, I mean, I guess, you know, that, that could inspire you. One is the student that's not necessarily that hungry, but they have something in them and you can kind of sense it. They either have some kind of internal drive, it's just not directed very well, um, or, you know, they're, they're just not really that inspired about what they do because they just haven't seen the connection between what they do and how they can make a difference. So there's, you know, those kind of students. And then there are the kind of students who are really super hungry and ready to go. Um, and, you know, even before you ask them, hey, would you like to attend school? You know, they're already there, they're on the bus, <laughs> you know. Uh, and both those kind of students actually impressed me. And I like the notion that you can take information or ideas or information really. I like the notion of taking information and making it not just palatable for someone or digestible by somebody that, that they can understand it, but also figure out what makes them tick, what makes them excited, and then use that as a high leverage to get them going on this information so they can use it in the right way that is personalized to them. And they can take that and start running with it. You know, and uh, with a little bit of guidance, they start structuring what they need to structure to make the vision real, or the idea real. <clears throat> but you almost have to, you know, in this world of ours right now, because there's so many distractions going on, mm. and it's very easy for people to get resigned. You know, when there's so many distractions going on, when you have so many choices, you can just drop your hands and go, well, I have no idea, you know? But 
if you give people some organized thinking around, okay, this is something I'm excited about. And this is a vision that I have. Okay, and now I have something excited about, some, this is a vision that I can produce for the world. I can see how people could get excited about this. But now I need to put some structure to it. And I need some system, systems to put underneath it. And as you make it more real for them, they start getting excited, but also they start seeing that their future is not going to look more like the same old past. In fact, that future could be anything they decide it's going to look like. And that's really cool because the light goes off in there. You can see it even for young kids when I, when I coach them. The light goes off for them. And you go, yeah, I don't have to live life like that. What I thought it was going to look like, which is more of the same past, but I could actually make a divergence here and turn it in a completely different direction that would be way more exciting for me. And you know what? It's even more cool. It's when a further light goes off in their head, they go, I could teach someone else to do this. And there's nothing more exciting in the world of teaching, I think, for that. You know, uh, you know, sometimes teaching gets a bad rap, right? You know, they say those who can't teach, <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, teachers don't get paid a lot. But I think they should be paid the most because there's nothing better than teaching someone to create a bright, outstanding future for themselves. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. Actually, my mom's a teacher. My my sisters are all special ed teachers. So I I grew up and lived with teachers my whole life. So believe me, wow, you're, you're yeah. talking to the choir here. Uh, so yeah. uh, now tell me, I, I'm always fascinated by names. We often don't get to name ourselves, but we get, get to name our businesses. Uh, how did you how did you come about the process of naming your business? Well, I mean, we have a couple of names in our business, but. Uh, one is the Global Meetup Mastermind, which is pretty straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> it's global, it's a meetup, it's a mastermind. We want to mastermind everybody around the world to create meetups. Uh, my other business is called Chahaya Mind LLC. And uh, Chah <coughs> Chahaya, in, in Malay language, I grew up you know, learning the Malay language. Uh, Chahaya means uh, bright ray of light or ray of sunshine. Well, I'm really glad it doesn't mean fuzzy fruit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Or hairy fruit mind. Right. You know, right. either. <laughs> but so high on mind, uh, you know, I, I also grew when I when I was uh, in my late teens, I actually, actually was uh, on the path of becoming a medical doctor or studying for that. And uh, uh, doing a couple of dissections on uh, animals convinced me I should never really be a doctor. It's just not going to work. <laughs> uh, but I, I that fascination with the brain never went away. And uh, I studied the brain. I studied uh, social co cognitive neuroscience. It's an amateur, really, not not as a professional student, or I'm not a scientist by any shape or form. But I studied enough about it to understand how to motivate people using really concrete brain science. And so uh, the origin of the word was, of of the company name was I wanted to combine, uh, you know, uh, the idea of getting an insight using our brain with uh with the word mind uh ah. so you know Chahaya mind came about that way so it's, it literally translates into real sunshine mind um in, in, you know invoking insight and and uh, uh creativity and joy uh, which i think most... and joy exactly yeah well said yeah thank you uh exactly uh also in in my my in my my language uh which is uh malayalam which is a form of it's an indian language uh, chai, I mean, chai actually means uh, a caffeinated drink. <laughs> so, right, chai. Kind of chai, goes chai tea. Ways. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah, chai tea, exactly. That comes from that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, real sunshine or coffee mind, <laughs> or we look at it. <laughs> okay. uh, that's what it translates into. I'm not kind of surprised that you have some sort of uh, science in your background. Uh, you mentioned uh, your interest in uh, becoming possibly a medical doctor, but, you know, you, you've taken a very systematized approach and uh, with meetup and, and you've really organized it and that's that's so helpful to most people what is it about your approach or have you know how you've systematized it that has really I mean when you've got 70,000 meetup members and you are growing at a rate of a new member every 20 minutes 24 7 and it's growing exponentially um, tell me a little bit about, I mean, to me, that makes you potentially the world leading mastermind on meetup marketing. Tell me a little bit about that, the systemization, how this came about. 
Sure. Um, you know, it's evolved over time and, and it still continues to evolve because, frankly, two things are occurring. One is we are fine tuning in a, in a more incremental fashion as we work with each new client that we meet. And, you know, they've got different characteristics, different markets, and we've covered a lot of range of markets. So we, we've done a pretty good job with that. And, and so we've incrementally improved the system to a point where, um, Actually, you don't even know this, but we're actually about to release a whole new um, system, a systematized process where you uh, one can actually do our program and step by step, literally just follow the steps and be able to get going on Meetup and in the right way. Because the Meetup platform doesn't really provide you training on how to do it the right way necessarily for your own particular business needs, etc. But we teach you how to do it the right way, staying through the meetup policies, systemize and everything. So we do that. That's really great. And um, we've systemized, systematized it pretty well into different stages. And there are, you could say, you know, um, and, and uh, the name of our system, by the way, I think it's really cool, is uh, MASS, M-A-S-S. -S. So it's Meetup Audience Support Systems. And that's mass one, two, three, and four. It's how we really thought this true, because it's what we're seeing for people. Um, and a mass it, audience. It, it's a mass audience. It's mass. It's massive. You know, it has all kinds of great connotations, it does. right? Does mass media? Yeah. Sure. Mass media, exactly. There are four levels that we've broken it down into. Uh, mass one is where you just want to. I'm going to use a very male-oriented term, and I apologize, but it's the best way I can describe it. You get to dominate or conquer your local area. And, you know, dominate doesn't mean you outdo everybody. It means you can be set up to collaborate even further with more people in your local area. Um, but you could be the go-to person for collaborations, which positions you very much higher being in your business. You know, now you're the go-to person and you're increasing your visibility in the area. So we teach you in Mass One how to do that to build up your local area and your positioning in the local area. Then Mass Two is where we start looking at the regional. Regional can vary from country to country or town to town or, you know, city to city. But typically, it's within like outside your normal reach. So if you're in, let's say, in the Bay Area, uh, if you're in San Jose, you know, uh, regional would be more like looking at the entire Bay Area, which goes from North Marin County all the way down to south of Gilroy. It's quite a vast territory. Oh, <laughs> it's it about is. Could be a state. From, could be a whole state by itself. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's about 15 million people in that area altogether. So you're looking at you know regional rather than local. Local would probably be about a million or so in San Jose. So it's a larger population when you go to regional, but it's also more opportunities, uh, greater outreach, uh, and you know there are different things you have to do. But your mass one being a local uh, person certainly helps you to build out to regional, which is mass two, and then mass three would be national, pretty natural natural progression. You know you look at how you can create a bigger presence countrywide. Now, again, this might vary from country. Some countries are smaller, et cetera, but you get the idea. And then, of course, guess what the fourth stage is? Uh, you go global. Yeah. So mass four is global and what it takes to move to global. So we've broken it down this way. It's pretty cool. Um, and mass one is pretty solid. Mass two is being built right now. I mean, I got all the, the basic tenets of each of these levels, uh, but they're being built out. And this will be available in the next week or so if, uh, to, to a mass quantity of people. And uh, so looking forward to releasing that. And that actually gives uh, uh, the person the, op the option of doing it themselves. And, uh, you know, of course, if they want to do collaborations, uh, then they can do a more involved program with me. But um, we've kind of broken it down that way. And then we, in Mass One, we do a bit of hand-holding in the initial stage because we want to make sure people set up their meetup right and correctly. And they learn how to do that. And we do that because by example, by working with them on their own meetup, and we literally handhold them and look over their shoulder while they do it and make sure that it's set up right and it's, you know, it's going to grow. After that, you know, in our Global Meetup Mastermind, which is a separate program, you also get the opportunity to, um, to create collaborations and learn how to do that, learn how to use webinars with Meetup. I'm assuming everybody knows what Meetup is as they're listening to this. But, um, you know, if you, if you start using webinars with Meetup, you uh, expand your reach considerably without having to travel to other places and without having to spend much additional time. So it's a, it's a fantastic leverage for people. So we teach all that in the Global Meetup Mastermind itself, which is a separate program. Uh, and we dig deeper, but the Mass 1 is where you start learning more about the local. Mass 2 is where you start learning about how to do webinars so you can expand your reach regionally, uh, how to do a little bit of collaborations. And then Mass 3, we take it out even further uh, and teach you how to do what's called a traveling show strategy where you can travel 
and do meetups and do business and enjoy your travels at the same time. Uh, so uh, there's all kinds of other strategies that we teach people how to do in each of these levels. But we paced it out pretty well because, you know, from brain science, I've learned if you try to give too much at one shot, even if it's good stuff, people just run for the hills. Sure. <laughs> they don't want to do it. The learning curve too steep and they just, you know, they, they just they, vanish. They climb it. So, yeah. 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 They're uh, gone. Yeah. Before yeah. I go on, let me backtrack just for a second back to uh, uh, kind of the word dominate. Just to uh, one thought that I had as you were saying that uh, yeah. the masculine was uh, a way that might uh, relate to feminize it is maybe that you, you really become a top influencer. Um, yeah. And that's really what people are looking for today. Everybody wants to reach out. Uh, you know, to the top influencers, and oh, it, yeah, you know, like it, it, yeah. they they kind of. It seems like it, I won't say it's all or nothing, but it is. Sometimes I do I do feel like things are becoming the haves and the have-nots. Yeah. And, and when you are a have and you are a top influencer, that is such a, a an attraction component that you really become a magnet for all kinds of other things. So. Sure. Now, let me go back one second to, uh, to your childhood, because the other thing that, that you talked about, too, you've, you've had this global experience that so many people have not had. You've been there. You've played in the dirt you know, around the world, and, and you've right. seen other things that many people have not had. So because you know, for you, not only is meetups, but also global meetups is just in your DNA. I mean, this, this right. is just, you know, you live it, you breathe it, you think it, and, you know, uh, and, and you think about how to share it and how to get people to yeah. uh, meet up. So let's talk right. a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, this is a global phenomenon. And, you know, today in today's world where it's so competitive, and I think almost anybody would agree with me it's competitive. It's competitive on three levels. One is you're competing with distractions, period. You know, you're competing with distractions from the news, from our president, from, I mean, however you feel about your president, it's still a distraction. Um, you, you're getting distractions from a lot, a lot of quarters, right? You know, and advertisements, God knows what, right? Uh, and then your distractions from your competition. So if your, comp your competition is marketing, or even people who are not exactly direct comp competitors, but they're competing for your audience's attention, they are also competing and they are distractions, right? You have distractions from your own internal state, especially when you know, it becomes harder to get business done. So you've got almost like three enemies going on in marketing, right? One is internal and two are external. And what I found is whenever you have, it's like a web of problems, right? It's a web of worry, you could say, like that. Whenever I notice a web of worry like that, my old mentor taught me, you know, Sunil, you have to think bigger. So you make these problems smaller and your vision much bigger. If you make your vision so big, that you have to solve these small problems more urgently, you'll probably get rid of these problems much quicker. And that's a very oversimplified way of saying it, but it's, it's actually quite accurate. I know some of you out there have businesses that are only defined locally. So you may be only licensed in your city, et cetera. So I understand that. And, and, and you know, I'm not, frankly, I'm not sure exactly what to, how to address that in the global context, but I'm sure we can find a way. But when you start looking outside of your own local town, interesting things start occurring. There are more opportunities, not just to sell to more people, but to find more interesting people, perhaps, or people who have more immediate challenges that you can help them with and will probably buy a lot faster from you. And I found that to be true. So we start looking outside of your own local town. You know, for example, if you go to markets in Australia or Singapore or Malaysia or Hong Kong, like I have, and if you learn, you know, you may have a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get past the learning curve and you understand what these people really need, you could probably sell a lot better. Uh, I remember I found a, a market in Dubai one time with um, uh, expats who moved from UK to Dubai. With it. They had a particular challenge that I could help them with. And it was so easy marketing it. I mean, it was ridiculous. And, you know, they had a lot of spare cash and it made the whole marketing process very interesting, very intriguing. And I didn't even have to travel to Dubai to make it happen, right? So when you start thinking at a global perspective, even if you're a chiropractor here locally in San Jose or in, in San Diego, perhaps, you know, if you're looking only locally, then you're going to compete with every other chiropractor in town. But if you start looking at it more in a, in a national perspective, looking at beyond your own town borders, you might find a different market that might make more sense to you. And what better way to test that market than to have a meetup group that you set up in that town 
And the way we do it is you have a caretaker in that local in that town that looks after the meetup for you. And then you can do webinars to that meetup group and build out a whole new audience there and test it out without having to spend a lot of money. Test out the market and see if it really works. You know, if you're selling nutritional products or something like that, now you've expanded your reach and your possibilities by leaps and bounds. I used to tell people, look, you know, you really need a mentor, a coach, because there's literally 10,000 ways to go wrong for every way to go right. And that was true then. Now there's 10 million ways to go wrong for every one <laughs> way right. to go right. The other thing is uh, I learned a long time ago uh, one direction that people often forget to look when they are confused is the direction that you mentioned. They forget to look up. They look around them. They look down. Yeah, they get a little right. depressed. They forget to look bigger and and. Uh, but and then the other thing, in fact, I was speaking to you mentioned the chiropractor. I was speaking to a chiropractor yesterday about this very thing, uh, mm -hmm. about global, and that's actually why I created the storytelling system to help mm -hmm. people take the ideas they have in their brain, and instead of just providing service and swapping, you know, hours for money, to be right. able to take the experiences that they have, which has never been more valuable than it is today in this brand new economy. Uh, mm -hmm. But now he wants to really use what he's learned and add a new vision to the world of chiropractic through information and Correct. you know l l helping people to you know find solutions to everyday problems and then uh, the other thing that yep. that you mentioned let's get back to mass because i think you know um i'd like to talk a little bit about the business uh process and now just from a, a marketing uh, perspective what group of people, Sunil, do you believe that you have the opportunity uh, to make the biggest impact with so that you can empower them with a system so they can make a big impact? Sure. Well, I would say, generally speaking, almost any service provider or someone who's an expert or both. So if you're an expert or you have expertise, or even if you don't think you have expertise, but you've been in a particular field for more than a year, you probably have some level of expertise. Now, of course, if you have more years, you probably have higher levels of expertise. But most people are surprised when they come and talk to me about what they discover in how I, I mean, I listen to people and let them talk. And then I say, I tell them back what I hear their expertise could look like. And they usually look at me kind of stupefied and shocked because they never heard it before said like that in such a positive way that it becomes more realistic. So if you're an expert or a service provider, or you have a certain kind of product that you want to sell that might make sense inside of, and you know, we can talk if you have a product, if you, you know, some certain products can sell, but mostly service providers or people with an expertise, if you speak on a topic and you want to have more speaking opportunities, if you're an author and you want to not just sell your books, but also sell the other package items that could go with your book. If you are a real estate brokerage, Meetup is a fantastic mechanism to incentivize uh, the retention of your agents. So one of the problems mm. uh, brokerages face is that they get good agents and then they lose them. And they lose them primarily because there's no prospecting system that the brokerage can really give them that's reliable and not cost, not too costly. So most realtors suffer because they have to, they feel like they have to do postcards and it's expensive and postcards do work, but you have to be consistent and you spend a lot of money before you get returned. Well, with Meetup, it doesn't necessarily have to look like that. So if you have a brokerage or you have a multi-level marketing system, a meetup group can be a fantastic incentive to give to your highest performing people to keep them on board because now they have a prospecting system. There's greater accountability because there's no excuse anymore. If they have a pipeline of relevant people coming to them and they're not closing those people, then the onus is on them. Um, and, and that's a good thing because then you know exactly where to coach them, where, to, where they need to you know, uh, close the gap in their skills which would be in conversion, conversion and selling and closing people. You know, real estate brokerages, financial experts, wealth experts, people who are starting out in MLMs, but they are more hungry and they have some sense of organization and they're ambitious and they really want to make it really committed. In other words, uh, they can, they, you know, you'll find our programs to be really extremely useful, very, very compelling to use. You know, people who do MLMs, the, usually the pain point is uh, prospecting again. You know, you've got to find prospects. You know, when you get in front of a people like you, like you would in a meetup, uh, you have almost immediate credibility. Psychologically, yeah. you comes in you're front an of authority. You. You're an authority, right? And if you have a little stage you're on top of that, you're, you know, just physically from, you know, from brain science, we know, you know, you're, you're immediately, it's very hard to resist that. Your, your credibility is almost immediately established. So if you create meetups and you do webinars and you have a presence, your credibility is certainly you know, going to go through the roof. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, 
probably a great example. I mean, my other clients are also great examples. You know, they're getting recognition. You know, people recognize you in the street. The conference sure. starts growing up. People watch you being recognized. I mean, I went to my brother's party the other day, <laughs> and this lady came up to me and said, you are so famous. You know, my brother kind of chuckled, you know, because he knows about me, what I do in Meetup. It's your notoriety that also grows, but um, it's people who are searching for any kind of audience that they want to build. That's one thing. Secondly, the best thing about an audience is that now you have a test bed that you can reliably use to test your offers, what you're offering. Because what I found is people usually have the biggest challenge for most people is how fast they can make money and, you know, recoup the expenses in their business and, and feel the confidence that, hey, they're producing something that people want. Well, the best way to find out is first get an audience. And Meetup's a great way to build an audience. Then use that audience as a test bed to test out your offers and refine your offerings. So what could be better than that? Get an audience and then test it out with your offers and see if people are actually responding. Get feedback from your market through the meetups to find out what people really need, what are they really looking for. You know, my realtor brokerage clients, they're beginning to understand in their local area what real estate buyers really want. And it varies and it's usually surprising is what we found. Meetup gives you an opportunity to really, someone who's looking to create an audience, test it out and refine your marketing, then you're certainly an ideal client to come work with me. Uh, you know, if, you, if things are already going well for you, you probably won't find any incentive to do it. But uh, if you're ambitious and you want to take it to a global level, then Meetup is a great way to scale your already good and existing business. And if you want to teach other people or give other people below you the opportunity to sell what you sell, then using the Meetup structure could also help you grow. I, I hate to do this because I'm talking to the meetup master, but I have to uh, respectfully uh, disagree that if people um, are already succeeding, that's great. But you know, one thing that you and I have talked about, and I've been studying and I'm doing a, a whole uh, course and documentary on, is the world has shifted. So, you know, whatever people have tried in the past that either did work or maybe is working for them now, it doesn't mean it's gonna to continue to work in six months from now. Correct. Because the, right. everything is changing so much. We yeah. have to stay current. You know, we've got the new freelance economy, gig economy, call it whatever you wanna call it. But yep. you know, the media shifted, the economy shifted, and the economy is the umbrella under which we all exist. So, you know, that that's the singular biggest consideration in any small business. So, you know, yep. I, I think what you're saying is 100% accurate, but I think everybody needs to have their eyes <laughs> open. And maybe even if they tried Meetup before, sure. maybe it didn't work. I actually think Meetup is going to rise. To, it's almost, it's such a new ball game that right. it's time to almost redefine Meetup, relook at it, try it again with a new set of eyes, new coaching, new help. But it is such a fit for this new economy, Sunil, and, and to go back to the haves and the have-nots, there are people selling their services for five bucks. And there's right. other people that are making 100,000, 500,000, a million or more. Those are the haves. And I think Meetup is going to be one of the, the big new marketplaces for people that want to make serious money in this economy. Well, you know, I, you're actually bang on. I have to admit, I, I, I was caught up in the past when I said, you know, Meetup's uh, not for people already successful. I think you're bang on there. Uh, about saying that the marketing is changing so much. I mean, with the technology and the digitization that you and I are very familiar with, I mean, that's expanding at such a fantastic rate that it's inconceivable to say that, you know, meetup, I mean, marketing is just going to continue the way it is right now. Yeah. And, you know, the businesses that are thriving in the current level of marketing, but that's going to change. And I think it will radically alter, not just won't increase, it'll just radically alter in its, in its characteristics in the next, oh, easily in the next couple of months, I would think, if not the next one year or two years. And so, you know, getting ahead of the curve is easy to say with Meetup because it combines both the offline marketing with the online marketing world. Anything that expands in terms of technology is just going to boost Meetup even more. If you're only targeting certain kinds of uh, platforms, you may be incurring quite a bit of risk is what I would say. The way we do it is we combine the Meetup platform with other platforms as well so we can reduce your risk as technology improves and innovations increase. Well, I think the, the current point. economy is trying literally to commoditize all of us mm -hmm. um, and not humanize us, okay? And yes. I think anybody who falls for that and falls into that trap, 
I just think yeah. they're they're going to ultimately lose their income and even fear losing their humanity. <laughs> to tell you sure. the truth, I, I call what what I like to do with my storytelling system. I I call it creating friends in commerce. Um, yes. I actually think that we're going back. It's both things. It is global, but it's also community. Uh, l- mm-hmm. Let's say mm-hmm. visualize this for a second. Visualize a village where mm-hmm. people are back almost pre-industrial age to you know providing local services in their local market and they're mm-hmm. specializing in that but other people can provide services to them to help them do that so that's kind of getting back to a community model a yep. humane model a fun model a joyful model and sure. i i think it, it's all in having you know knowing who you are and standing your ground absolutely yeah no and this ties in with what you do with the the, the on-demand gig economy, I think that's great. I think that's certainly, it's already showing up. The numbers are already clearly there. You know, um, that's why people, I mean, almost have to go with increased technology. A lot of a lot of jobs are going to be lost. I mean, that's, I, I think that's it's almost inevitable, inevitable it's going to happen. Um, and so people will have to stop relying on a job and start looking at getting gigs. and yeah. Becoming you know, an entrepreneur, small becoming business. Becoming an entrepreneur, yeah. You know, uh, I, I just don't see any other... Sh- other alternative to it. it. It ties in very well with creating this global vision, creating a bigger vision. So as a person of the gig economy, if you're a consultant, then you don't have to restrict your market. You know, if you if you think bigger and globally, now, you know, there's well potentially seven or eight billion people you could sell to in the near future. Uh, right. Let's talk a little bit about some of the examples of who you found that you can best help today. Maybe some success stories. Sure. Yeah. I mean, as Cammy Baker, uh, and she was a fast, uh, fast learner. I mean, she really took it on. And she was starting a meetup in Boston, and she provided trainings in networking and also trainings to realtors and how to really build their business. You know, she, I think she had tried some meetups, but it didn't really work out for her. And so we set up this meetup group in Boston. I, uh, you know, I worked with her. We did a little bit of research, is what we do when we first start, and uh, we figured out where to po- where to post it, where to locate it, where to launch it, what date to launch it. You know, we went into quite a number of details, but when we launched it, within 48 hours, she had a wait list mm. for her first event, which in Boston, Boston has 15 million people too, but it's pretty competitive in Boston, you know, because uh, it's highly concentrated in one area. Most, most of the events are there. Uh, this is an actual Boston area itself. And so we had a waiting list within 48 hours, 75% over capacity. And uh, so she didn't stop. She started doing a traveling road strategy and we uh, built out some meetup groups while she traveled along the Eastern Seaboard down to Miami and her groups now, if I'm not mistaken, are about 5,000 in size already. She's grown pretty fast and she's not even done because she took a break and she's, you know, in Washington, she's moved up to Washington state. She's doing really well there. Um, and she's going to get married. She's, gonna, you know, she's very happy there. And, uh, uh, but you know, if she had even like paid even half more attention to it, I mean, she could have been at maybe 7,500 or maybe 8,000 by now, you know, and of course she's made money from it. And- hey, wait, wait, I got to ask you a question. I don't want to freak sure. people out. Uh, yeah. l- let's talk a little bit about, Having 7,000 people in a meetup, how yeah. important organization is that meetup provides? So you, they're not driving you crazy, folks. Oh, because yeah. Because meetup yeah. provides this great organization to help you really, you know, build friends in commerce, but also yeah. have control that is really provided with uh, some of the cloud-based part of a meetup. So l- let's kind of address that so people... Oh, can- yeah, yeah. Good, good point. A very good point. You know, honestly, when I first started my meetup groups and we were experiencing that level of growth myself, I spent about an hour and a half every month on meetup to be honest with you it doesn't take up a lot of time and that hour and a half wasn't just in one sitting it was spread out over time but it doesn't really take up a lot of time uh today we have 30 meetup accounts i think of something crazy like that i pay my admin in the philippines but we trained her really well we trained her very well to take over it and pretty much all the work's done by her and one other admin that we have um and i don't do any work with with that except for the design work a design work, I mean, I designed the meetups. You don't really even have to do that. When I first started, I didn't do it every month because what I found was I could use pretty much the same PowerPoint each time and the same flow of the event. It was a very simple flow of the event. It wasn't very anything elaborate. Just because you have more groups doesn't have you have more events. You can have several groups that feed one event per month, and that's very, very easy to manage. Uh, so you need time to travel to the, <laughs> need to get in your car and go to the event, obviously. Yeah, unless you're doing a webinar, then you need, don't need to do that. And right. Then you just do it from the comfort of your home, and you know, and uh, then you just need time to do the webinar. My webinars now, 
Uh, the average time for my webinars are about 30 minutes. And uh, usually people chat and send me questions after or they just sign up for my free consultation or the free 15 minute that I rarely do, but or, or just my paid consultations. The time involved is not really that high. Okay. The reason that people get overwhelmed, I found, is because they don't know what they're doing. And so when they try to set up stuff, they spend a lot of time trying to figure out things that they need to decide on that they don't know how to decide on. So that's where a lot of the stress comes from when they work with Meetup and try and do it themselves. That's why we have a hand-holding phase in my global Meetup Mastermind program, which pretty much eliminates all that pain. I mean, we can help you set up in, in a matter of a few calls. And that includes the design time of your first Meetup group and events, and then actually hand-hold you during the application process to Meetup because you have to apply to Meetup to get your Meetup approved. And that saves so much time. Everybody who's done it has, tell, has told me, I could not have done this without your team or you. Awesome. Give us an example of somebody who's just starting out, some maybe starting fresh with their sure. vision. Yeah, so let's say they have a vision like uh, someone starting out. She has an MLM. Uh, she just started in a multi-level marketing group. She's brand new. She's got her first recruit today. She already has some meetup groups, so you don't have to have a meetup group already if you are joining us. She's going to start out with a hand-holding phase. It'll last maybe about four weeks or so. So some people last only a week. That's all we need. You know, It's pretty fast. But that hand-holding phase, we'll actually work with you a series of short phone calls to help you get your branding straight to a certain point and your offer. What are you gonna offer in your, how, what are you gonna upsell? You're gonna help you design the actual meetup flow, what it look like. And then in a very simple way, easy way and quick way, because we really distilled the whole process pretty well. We'll help you set up all the things you need to set up for your meetup application, which is not a lot of stuff, but it's things that you need to think through. So you do it right. And if you do it right, then your meetup will grow. If you don't do it right, your meetup will not grow. It'll die out pretty soon. So we set it up correctly. And then um, we actually get on the Meetup website with you. So we handhold you through the application process to make sure that it goes completely smooth for you. Because the application process, although it's set up pretty well, can be kind of confusing. For most people, it is. And it saves about sometimes as much as three hours. So, because people really agonize over this and they, you know, they, it just turns into a horrendous task. So we can pretty much distill it into an hour and you're done. And you're set up correctly in a meetup group, in your event, and you'll probably get a really good launch out of it and grow your meetup, not just your meetup audience, but also your event attendance at your first meetup event. Okay. So we set it up. And then after that, once you understand how to do that, most people go, okay, I have a really good grounding in how to do meetups. Then they want to learn more stuff and they want to fine tune their meetups as they go along. So what we provided is a weekly office hour setup. You know, this is not, I'm describing my global meetup mastermind, obviously. But in the Global Meetup Mastermind, on a weekly basis, you come, you hang out, you interact with me. If you have questions, I answer. But I also teach you the other steps you need to put in in order to build it out even further to an exponential level. Because I'm interested in the exponential audience, Absolutely. not just a thousand. I want to get you to like a whole bunch of people around the world if possible. And of course, some people just want to do nationally first, and that's fine. You can start that way. But we want to teach you all the other stuff. And it takes a while to teach you and how to do that. And we, you know, we're very transparent. We show you exactly how we did it. And we show you online, you know, by sharing our screens, how we did it. I show you all my systems. I also give you my systems, my handbooks. Uh, and we paste it all out in a very cool way so people are not overwhelmed. You know, it's really well done. It's really well paced. And it's very flexible. And people love it, you know, because they come in, they ask me questions, and I'm happy to answer. I'm nowhere near any level of burnout around it. I mean, I love sharing what I, what I have because there's so much stuff that I also recognize while I'm talking to people that, wow, these are things I took for, for granted. I, I should really t turn that into a module and teach people how to do exactly that. So there's a lot of learning that I do on, 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 the, on the calls myself to help improve the program. And uh, so, you know, I, I think I can tell them quality of my voice that I'm really excited about doing it. Well, exactly. Yeah. And, and I was going to comment on that. You can tell from your, your voice, your enthusiasm, that this is obviously uh, something that has not burned you up. So now the next question I want to ask you, uh, I have to uh, say up front, it may not be answerable. And, and I say yeah. that because... Um, there's so much change going on, and I love what you just said about you know the ongoing coaching. That is so vital today. The place we are, and the main thing for me, in fact, I even do a, a little weekly, what I call a kind of a ministry. Uh, it's like a 
a how to find work in 27 ministry because it's changed. It's not. I, I don't, I'm not a person that helps people with get jobs, uh, right. but today I think the future of work is about freelance work and being an entrepreneur. I help out with the jobs ministry, but really I, I like to help people to understand where they are and where the economy is. And a lot of people are almost like the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Things have mm. shifted, but they haven't. And they maybe they were successful, and maybe suddenly they're finding it harder to get new clients than ever, and they don't mm -hmm. realize they're working in a the conventional or past or incumbent economy that's pretty much mm -hmm. over. Uh, companies are are no longer hiring in the same way. Even GM is creating cars for drivers, and uh, Walmart is hiring their own employees to work as freelancers on their way home, and everybody <laughs> is is joining the gig economy. So right. uh, what I'd like you to do is kind of address as much as you can where mm -hmm. you see yourself and meet up in a year from now. Well, that's a good question. You know, one of the goals I set myself for the next year is to set up a thousand collaborations with, high, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, collaborations with people like you, for example, you know, people who are visionaries looking at, uh, so thousand you know, collaborations with visionaries are people who are really looking to build out their audience at a big level. Um, and... Um, and I'm excited about that because that doesn't just benefit me. It benefits my clients, obviously, but also the world. Because uh, you have a thousand collaborations, you know, you are looking at, I mean, each person has at least a thousand people. I mean, I would imagine a thousand collaborations could probably reach out for each collaboration to maybe 10,000 people, right? So if you have a thousand times 10,000, you do the math. That's a lot of people you're beginning to reach in the first year. But next year, I'm looking at having uh, 50 trainers who can take on training uh, people and meet up. Uh, either at the mass level or at the level of global meetup mastermind and take it out even further. So that's my other uh, goal for next year. Let but, me ask you one question for uh, it's uh, kind of on my mind. Um, sure. You know, there's the old uh, speak to sell uh, for mm -hmm. people who want to be speakers and meet up. And how do speakers fit into meet up and the speak to sell model or kind of address that for people, if you will? Sure. Well, meet up as a meet up is one. Now, Meetup has a couple of policies, but one primary thing they're very concerned about is that you organize and create face-to-face -face meetings you know, or, or in-person meetings, not just one-on-one -on -one meetings, but, but actually group meetings where people meet in person as, as opposed to virtual. Now, by policy, you can, uh, for every live, uh, every in-person event you do, you can do one webinar or virtual event. So you can do half and half, okay? Yeah. But having said that, uh, Meetup is not averse uh, and this we know this because we, we've talked to them. We've talked to Meetup HQ, and uh, we even knew, know a couple of people that they've consult. They've actually consulted with us because they wanted to know how we, they can grow their Meetup right, globally. Right. So we've actually advised them on how to do that as well. And uh, I like to think, I like to take claim for this, but I, I don't know if I can. But they're not business averse, so that doesn't mean you know you can't do business on Meetup. You can do business on Meetup. And uh, the standard model of doing you know paid uh, uh, you know speaking from the stage and selling from the stage. Is very very uh, very workable inside of Meetup. We've done it very successfully. It affects how we do it, how we make money primarily is from by speaking from the stage, and we make offers from the stage. We usually have our events be free, although we do have paid events as well. We have workshops that we do as well. Uh, there's certain ways that we do it on Meetup that's different from how most of the market on Meetup on on work their workshops. But you can certainly have the workshop model where you have a two-day workshop, you post it on Meetup. But there's certain things again. I emphasize: don't try to do this at home. <laughs> you got it. There are certain nuances you got to understand and do it. But you can certainly run a workshop business on Meetup, not a problem. Uh, you can also do a speaking from the stage business from Meetup, not a problem. It actually lends itself to it. The other thing about Meetup that's an advantage to speakers is you don't have to spend a lot of time doing it. If you run your own Meetup, there are two advantages. You control the time of the event. So literally, you can make the event an hour event and still make money doing that. Very straightforward to do. This should be Welcome news to a lot of speakers, because I know a lot of speaking events, you have to go there and spend half a day there, right? Uh, you don't have to do that with Meetup because you control everything. Second advantage, and that's a primary psychological advantage, is that you're setting up conditions for people to come to you in your organization. Mm, yeah. You're not speaking for another organization. You're speaking in your organization, which is on Meetup as a platform, but people are not coming there because they're coming to a Meetup. They're coming there because your organization is branded on Meetup. If you do that and you set it up right, your branding goes up. Not only your speaking goes up, but your branding goes up. That accentuates your positioning. 
in the area, if not in the country, if you set it up right, you know. So that's that's a big distinction. We do it on Meetup versus uh, trying to find your own speaking gigs from other organizations. Okay, in closing, because I want to respect everybody's time here, is uh, I'm going to ask you for a quick summary. But also, if you could kind of wrap it in, the email that I got from you today, which is about return on investment in the Global Meetup Mastermind Group. Mm -hmm. And I know that you sometimes provide nice discounts. So let's wrap this up. Give people who are kind of thinking about this. Maybe they're a little fearful or something, but give them a nice little summary. Well, you know, um, the Global Business Ma Meetup Mastermind is probably the best match for most of you out there, especially if you're an entrepreneur, especially if you're in a service area, for almost for sure, it's probably the best option. Um, and the uh, what you get in there is you get the hand-holding support one-on-one. -on -one. You you get a complete brain dump from me over time on how to grow a regional, national, and global audience. Uh, you get one year of continued support after your hand-holding phase, which is very stellar, and everybody raves about the support that I provide. Uh, you also get to network and mastermind with the best connectors and ambitious entrepreneurs that I've found who are very generous with their time and energy and uh, will help you and would love to collaborate as well. And these are people not just in my clientele, but the people I have in my own communities and my other masterminds that I belong to as well. And I'm more than happy to share that as long as you're in the program and you know, you're, you're doing the work that I in, and instruct you to do. Uh, you also get to learn how to leverage your audience combining other platforms, I call this cross-platforming. So you learn how to combine Meetup with Facebook, with LinkedIn, Twitter, Alignable. You get to learn how to do webinars on Meetup, how to run that from the comfort of your own home so you don't have to travel too much. Uh, and you make it easier in your audience as well because they can attend it from their own home and their office. Uh, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee for this program. And for a limited time only, two complimentary tickets to my Exponential Business Audience Workshop in the Bay Area on September 22nd and 23rd. And that's included in your tuition when you do the Global Meetup Mastermind. Also, for a limited time, you'll get lifetime membership into the Global Meetup Mastermind. Our intention is to really grow this out and keep people you know, in our program and you know, wanting to engage, et cetera. And people want to do that anyway. Uh, but for a limited time, we're offering a lifetime membership. The biggest benefit, I would say, is what you'll get, and what I promise you, is a transformation for yourself and your business confidence. So it's not just your business confidence, but confidence in yourself, your ability to uh, express a vision uh, and verbally, and then also make it real with concrete structures and systems and marketing that will make a difference in an audience that's engaging for you. But that's essentially, the, in, a, in a nutshell, what you're going to get. There's other stuff that you get as well that I probably haven't covered here, but that those are the main things. Okay, It's currently priced at $2,497, and you get a lifetime for the short period right now. Or you can do 12 monthly payments of $247. Those are the two options for payment right now. Pretty reasonable payments for, for most people. Well, I call um, that earn while you learn. Coming up next, folks, stay tuned for our resources page information. So Neil Boscaran, founder of Global Meetup Mastermind, thanks for joining us. My total pleasure. Thank you. So this is where I'd like to steer you to our resources site, dreamteammentoring.com. That's where you're going to learn more about us and more importantly about our meetup groups with over 70,000 plus members and growing every 20 minutes, 24-7 exponentially. Plus, you'll learn more about my national radio shows with broadcast affiliates on NBC, CBS, ABC, Fox, and more. So, if I mention your book on my shows, then you immediately qualify for, as featured on, Media Citation Status. And that's a big part of the storytelling system that I've developed. For years in our media marketing industry, I've been known as the storyteller's storyteller. I help coaches, authors, speakers, celebrities, entertainers, and their teams grow businesses. I teach small businesses of all size how to find their life story, how to pull their message out of that backstory. And then I teach them, along with our green team of mentors, how to tell it in a really powerful way and market it out there to the world of their ideal audience so they can make more of an impact. So in other words, I'm a branding marketing expert who helps rainmakers, entrepreneurs, and business owners attract more leads and increase sales by creating engaging audiobook interviews about the story behind their profile, their book, their meetup, or webinar. These are designed to build trust, credibility, and expert authority status for their brand. 
And what makes us different? We can work much faster. For example, my interview with Mike Driggers, in which we created the story behind his book, The One Element, as an audio book before the paper book was even published. So I'd love to interview you about get this co-hosting with us one of our weekly teleclasses about gaining free agent earning status in the gig economy. You want to become a free agent? But wait, what is the gig economy? The controversial and rising freelancer gig economy. And more importantly, why do earnings from it range so broadly from literally as little as five bucks for digital freelance giggers on sites like Fiverr.com up to small business owners, consultants, coaches, speakers, authors, and experts who are earning $100,000 or even hundreds of thousands of dollars annually using sites such as LinkedIn and Meetup as never before. The difference, I believe, is in the marketing. So we have the answers you want because all forms of media and marketing have both strengths and weaknesses. Well, when you use multiple media integration, then the strength of one media offsets the inherent weakness of the other media. My audiobooks are part of my digital storytelling system to sell the story behind your book or your meetup or your webinar or your LinkedIn profile or your website to promote your anything. Think you're not ready to start your own freelance business yet, even though we're in the gig economy? No worries. Ask us about our new Earn While You Learn scholarship program. We literally, I'm convinced, have all the solutions you need right here. Now, why is storytelling like this so powerful for all businesses in this new economy? It's because as human beings, we learn to evolve to our true destinies from stories. Our free teleclass series is my way of giving back, almost like my own personal ministry, to the rising freelancer community that I've worked with for decades. And we curate this new gig working and the opportunities in this new economy for you so you don't have to. So the way I team up with new partners is this. I simply like to invite you to our dreamteammentoring.com page so you can learn more about our free bonus resources there and so you can join our dream team. It's so simple, we start with a short and friendly interview process that I call Get In Where You Fit In because it's designed to help people, new people, get in, not screen them out. We're looking for what I call friendships in commerce to network with and support self-employed entrepreneurs and small business owners. I'm talking about small businesses of all sizes, but people who are working in this changed world of the on-demand freelancer gig economy. Literally yesterday, I was interviewed by KTVU Channel 2 here in the Bay Area because I was out at a healthcare rally talking about how younger people and older people alike need to be out in the streets fighting to get health care for this new economy. My feeling is that we really need to partner together as a community. And speaking of friends in commerce, my dream team partner, Mike Driggers, creates books, paper anthology books, on demand, ones that you can hold in your hand, pass out to prospects like a business card, sell online, and associate yourself with the co-author celebrities who are also in your book, as I do with Mike. So I can help you best by adding what I do with our on-demand audio book productions and publicity promotions, or meetup.com and webinar promotions, by working with my own partners as affiliates and their specialties. So this way you can better invest and get more free bonuses for any help you need in our Dream Team Mentoring Partner page. Then you can, one, choose to invest in my storytelling system that I've developed because it's fastest and most cost effective. And even if you buy a la carte, you can still get coached by me and my Dream Team of Media Marketing Partners. Or vice versa, if you go to our partner page, you can hire my partners at their pricing. No markup and also receive the benefits of my ongoing coaching, connections, etc. I want to help you start working as a free agent by freelancing in the gig economy. And folks, here it isn't an app, it's a marketing mindset. That's what differentiates the haves from the have-nots. So here, if you contact me for my Find Your Fit consultation, because I get everybody's different, it's super easy to do. Just visit dreamteammentoring.com. Whoever you are, I sincerely am asking you to test me in a free call. Literally test me. Let me interview you to, one, learn if we can become at least friends in commerce. 
and two, maybe my co-host, and three, let's see if I can help you better tell your signature story in a really powerful way to market it out there to the world of your ideal audience so you can make more of an impact. And a final thought about me, for over 40 years, I've been studying how to achieve world peace through human revolution one person at a time. Today, my personal big vision is helping entrepreneurs achieve their human revolution to personal happiness through success in their small business one entrepreneur at a time. You will change your storytelling and change your destiny with the storytelling system. Thanks for listening. I'm Mike Hayes.